What's up team and welcome to this week's video and today we're talking about cycling nutrition and more specifically what we consume while we're riding. Now if you're anything like me when you think of cycling nutrition you think about gels, bars and all those powders we can put in our bottles but do they actually provide us with anything extra that we can't get from normal foods? Are they worth the money and how much more actually do they cost per ride than other foods, fruits, sweets, all those sorts of things. Well today, that's exactly what we're going to go through. Let me finish this ride, because it's hard talking while going up a hill, and I'll see you once I'm back home. And we're back. Nice little recovery ride. So feel free to use the timestamps below if there's a certain part of the video you want to skip to. But number one, we're gonna go through how much do you actually need to consume on the bike and when to kind of eat those bananas, gels, whatever it is you're consuming. Then we're gonna go through what's even in them. So what sort of sugars are in them? Why do we even need them in the first place? Then we'll go through cost and the, the price difference between a banana and a gel on your rides and what the main differences are. And then finally, we'll go through some options. Obviously there's two right here, um, but we'll go through some options once we then know how much they cost and what's actually in these products. So how much we need actually depends on how long we're out and then how intense the ride is. But generally, as a good rule of thumb, around about 60 grams of carbohydrates is what you need per hour if you're doing more than an hour's ride. So if you're doing an hour's ride, you probably have enough fuel on board from the meal you ate before you went out, for example, or just the muscle glycogen, so the sugar stored within the muscles um, to kind of get you through one hour. But any further than one hour, and definitely further than one hour and a half, you need to start taking something on board. And if we're talking about 60 grams per hour, then a gel, for example, um, any brand, usually contain around about 20 grams of carbohydrates. Um, so around about three gels per hour we're talking, or for example, like a banana, um, that's around 20 grams of carbohydrates as well. So you're talking, you know, if you were just doing bananas, three bananas per hour. The less intense your ride is, the more you can get away with consuming less. However, when we're doing sort of less intense rides, we're usually going further, so we do need to take some fuel with us. But if you know, you're hammering it for, t for two hours, then you might need a little bit more fuel, a little bit more sugar to help fuel that intense ride. And when we're talking about that amount, so 60 grams, for example, on the bike, you don't want to consume that all in one go. You might struggle to digest it, um, and you want to kind of have a slow, steady release of carbohydrates and sugars throughout that hour. So rather than having 60 grams all in one go, eating, I don't know, three bananas or three gels or a combination or whatever it is you're eating, um, you want to kind of space them out across the hour. So what I like to do is every 20 minutes just have something just to kind of drip feed those sugars into my system um, as I go out on the ride. And you can even set up notifications as well, for example, on my Garmin. I don't set it up usually, um, but what you can do is set a little bleep to occur and a little notification every 20 minutes to make sure you remember to consume something. When we're out on the bike, our muscles use fat and also sugar to help fuel us. The longer you go and the less intense, the more it's about fat. However, you will be using some sugar, but if you're doing more intense rides or some really hard efforts, then your body will favor more, sort of the, more towards the sugary side. So what we need to do with the, the foods we're eating on the ride is we're trying to not necessarily replenish the sugar stored in the muscles, because that kind of happens when we recover after the ride, but our body will use those sugars stored within our muscles unless we start adding some extra fuel in, getting some sugar in the bloodstream. So what all we're trying to do by consuming foods on the bike is to prevent you know, complete usage of all those sugars that are stored in our muscles, because that's commonly what we call bonking, you know, when you feel terrible out on the bike, your body's used all the sugars it's got stored up in the liver and in the muscle, and then it's got nothing left. So what's even in these gels, bananas, the food that we eat that helps fuelers? And I do have some other options to go through, but I've only got a banana and gels with me today. Um, but there are four main sugars. There are some others, and for example, gels actually use uh, mainly something called maltodextrin, which is kind of kind of a form of glucose, but um, it's more readily available. So there's four main types of sugar, glucose, fructose, sucrose, and lactose. So lactose is a sugar commonly contained within milk. You don't necessarily consume too much of it as cyclists. Sucrose is kind of table sugar. So if you ever put sugar just from the table in your um, cycling bottle, this is what's that. And this sucrose is actually a combination of 
these two. So it's just these two kind of combined as a, as a chemical, not a chemical, but a, um, as a molecule um, to make sucrose. Fructose is what we often get in fruits. So this is kind of naturally occurring sugars. This is now starting to be included in some cycling nutrition and some gels and things because um, scientists have realized that our body can transport glucose and fructose around the body with two different what we call trans transporters so you can kind of consume them in combination with each other. Glucose is then what's commonly in all these sports drinks and some gels as well. This is kind of the the quickest releasing of, of these and the quickest releasing of the sugars and is what's actually stored within the muscle and is what our body uses. Hence why it is the quickest releasing because it's what our body will break down fructose, sucrose and lactose into to provide us with the energy. So if it's already done for us, it gets into the bloodstream and gets used by the muscle that much more quickly. Okay, so we know kind of how much we need, around about 60 grams per hour, although there's some science that you know, says you can even consume up to 90 grams if you're utilizing glucose and fructose and things um, but that kind of overcomplicates it a little bit if we just say 60 grams that's kind of what we need every single hour give or take if you're a bigger rider a bit more smaller rider a little bit less we now know kind of what's in them in terms of sugars but there's also other things in them such as um, potassium and sodium to help replace the salt we lose and, and um, some of those electrolytes that we lose but what other options are there and how much do they cost compared to gels and bars um, and whatever it is you're putting in your drinks bottle. So for example, again, I'm not picking out SAS as a brand or this video isn't against any brands, um, but this is just what I've used in, in the past and what I have um, to hand. So for example, one of these gels costs around one pound. And just having a look on the Tesco website, the banana I got last weekend in my weekly shop, 13p. And this contains same amount of carbohydrates really as this. This has got added you know, potassium, sweeteners, lots of other things in it. However, the banana also contains potassium and a few of the bits and bobs, lots of other vitamins and minerals that gels and other products don't necessarily contain um, because it's a natural product. So plenty more bang for your buck, even though it's probably easier to fill your jersey pocket with gels as opposed to bananas. So if you have a look on the Tesco website, for example, and again, I don't have any allegiances to Tesco, but this is where I do my weekly shop. Um, you can see here, stone dates, 450 grams, cost £3.30, and you only need 30 grams, as you can see at the top of the screen, to get around about 20 grams of sugar. And dates contain lots of other vitamins and minerals, and again, like potassium and, and sodium, and, and lots of other bits and bobs that you don't necessarily get in gels or bars or whatever cycling products you're using. So to work out how much it is per serving compared to like a gel or a bar, we need to divide 450 grams by a 30 gram serving. So 450 grams divided by 30 equals 15. So then we divide the price. So it was three pound 30, three pound 30 divided by 15. So 22 P per serving of dates for that 20 grams of sugar you need. Lots of vitamins and minerals in there as opposed to cycling nutrition. We'll have some vitamins and minerals that they've added in, um, but you can see that sometimes buying natural foods is probably a little bit cheaper um, than buying these specific cycling products. As we said, there's lots of different types of sugars. So the sugar in fruit, for example, like bananas or dates, as we've just seen, is mainly fructose, but it's you can't handle lots and lots of fructose all in one go. You need to have a combination of glucose as well. So for example, let's go for, again, let's hit up Tesco and let's go for Jelly Babies this time. So you can see here, let's go for this bag. This is what I've gotten in the past for some of my cycling trips. <clears throat> and again, we can work out the price. So 400 grams, how much do we need for a 20 gram serving? Oh, perfect, 20 grams of sugars in a pack of Jelly Babies. And that's 26.4 grams of Jelly Babies. So 400 gram packet divided by 26. So 0.4, we'll go 26, so 15 again. So divide two pounds by 15. And per serving of Jelly Babies, we're getting that for 13p. So you're getting that 20 minute block of sugar for 13p. And if we look at the ingredients for Jelly Babies, for example, we can see there's sugar, there's glucose, syrup. So these sugars in Jelly Babies are mainly gonna be made up of glucose and possibly a little bit of sucrose, which is a combination of glucose and fructose. So, um, so going for something like some natural foods, some dates, some bananas, whatever it may be, is gonna help provide you lots of vitamins and minerals, but also some fructose. And then adding in some sweets, for example, is gonna help get in some glucose, um, but also you know, be a lot cheaper than just specific cycling sports nutrition. 
and having that all the time. So you're out in the bag, what options are there for fuel? So there's absolutely tons out there and we've gone through a couple today. Obviously you can get some specific cycling nutrition supplements such as gels, um, and bars. Bars tend to be around about the same price per serving as gels do. I think I looked on the website the other day and there's some bars for around about two pounds, but that provides you with 40 grams of carbohydrates. So you'd have about half of that. But there's lots of other options out there. I like to take a combination of specific sports nutrition. So things like gels, just as a bit of a backup. And I always have one or two gels in my bar bag, but plenty of options. Basically any sweets are gonna be great to go. Just make sure when you are buying any sweets, you do look at the packet and see how much sugars uh, are contained within them and make sure you kind of have around about 20 grams every 20 minutes or getting around about 60 grams of sugar per hour. There's also other options like, for example, if you, if you stop off by the side of the road, getting some kind of Coke. Um, Coke contains lots of sugar. And again, we're talking commonly what's called full fat Coke. Don't get diet Coke um, because you're not gonna get any sugar within that. Other options in terms of fruit, you're looking kind of for the, the dense sugary fruits. So things like bananas, things like dates like we saw, or things like dried fruits as well, raisins, uh, apricots. All those dried fruits are gonna be quite sugary. Whereas if you're you know, carrying around like apples and strawberries, they're quite light and watery and don't actually contain too many carbohydrates. So you're gonna end up having to take like a massive box of strawberries to get 20 grams of carbs. So sticking to really sugary fruits, gonna provide you with lots of carbohydrates. So have a quick look at the nutritional information in the supermarket before you head out or when you're doing your shopping, just to make sure that that portion of fruit or whatever you're having amounts to around about 20 grams of carbohydrates and you should be good to go. So my recommendation, what do I do while out on the bike and what do I kind of recommend people to do? I would recommend having some specific cycling nutrition if you really like it, there's no harm in it. Um, and also having some on the bike somewhere for a rainy day as well. But try and get the majority of your um, sugars while out on a ride from natural sources if you can. Bananas, apricots, dried fruits, they're gonna contain lots of fiber, lots of vitamins and minerals, as well as the sugar you need. And then from, for example, sweets is another really good option, um, a lot cheaper than cycling nutrition that you can get from the supermarket. Thank you for watching this week's video. Hopefully you found it useful. Hopefully when you go out on the bike next, you've now got some options in terms of food or cycling nutrition and you now have a bit of a better idea of how much normal food costs as opposed to cycling nutrition and the pros and cons of both and what's actually in the products. Let me know down in the comments below what your favorite um, foods are to consume or sugars to consume while out on the bike. Uh, I know my favorite probably is cake from the local coffee shop. But again, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in next week's video.